What's going on, guys? This is Grim Reaper back with the Boar's Hat Podcast. Um, today we're covering chapter 297. The greatness is inching ever closer to chapter 300. The predicted date of the return of the motherfucking goddamn dirty demon king. That detestable piece of shit. Um, hopefully he comes back and shows out. Uh, but for today, we had a whole different can of worms to get into. Um, I got uh, the usual niggas all up in this bitch. Uh, Keishan Prime and Griever. Ready? Nope. Uh, we got a guest from the Discord. Um, long time Discord participants in hours of time. We'll be chilling and shit like that. Take the link in the description to be joining the Discord so you become a nigga just like this nigga. Uh, Torian. Yo. <laughs> what's good? What's good? Um, yeah, let's hop into that shit, bro. Um, let's do our chapter, quick chapter thoughts and ratings real quick. Top to bottom, Grim? Sure. All right. So, uh, for me, I thought the chapter was a solid 8.5, 9 out of 10. It was a pretty, pretty great chapter. I got my own issues with the chapter and, you know, stuff like that. But from a hype, like each page was just like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? And it was filled with content and I can't really ask for anything more. So, yeah. Uh, personally, I'd give it maybe a 7.5, mostly because we didn't really get any mal, you know, like action, only getting it set up for next week. So, but, uh, hey, my, remember that idea I had last time about potentially Escanor's channeling the power into mal? That might be true, so I'm happy <laughs> about that. <laughs> be it not fully confirmed, so I'll take it as a you know pending <laughs> theory confirmed but i'm still happy yeah we'll hashtag confirmed not confirmed yeah we we'll definitely <laughs> for those possibilities later on uh so Tori? uh I, I like the chapter it was pretty good um the thing the thing that i was the most i was the most interested in was the how the grace transfers from one person to another because i know mel said um that it just found escanor after eons but that's that's the thing that really Caught my eye the most. I'll give it a 7.5. Um, it was overall pretty good. Pretty big cliffhanger. Mm. Um, do, do you guys remember what you guys told me at the beginning of this fight? No, Refresh I don't. my memory. I know it's just going to go down the Rudesco <laughs> line, but I, and, and I don't give a flying motherfucker. <laughs> Nigga I... in them cheeks, bro. <laughs> he in them OG cheeks, bro. This nigga. All right, but I'll this. Um, I thought the chapter was uh definitely a nine out of ten. Everything that I wanted to happen. I complained previously about um Escanor's um lack of development in contrast to the rest of the sins, and we're getting more insight into that. Um, I, we, the community was complaining about the fights and like how different people aren't doing what they should be, and I think this is matching up a little bit better now. Um. We got to see a bunch of different niggas interact. King is showing up a little bit more with Zeldris going on. And with the reveal of the time thing, or the exactitude of the time thing, uh, I think it confirms what we were talking about previously about um, chapter 300. So, like I said, I, I probably gave this chapter like a, a 9 out of 10 because of all that. And it's... it's There were some parts here that I was skeptical about and we can elaborate on. But overall, I think this chapter was great. It was it was a change of pace. Yeah. Um, but let's hop into it, bro. Uh, so I'm just <laughs> first say that the cover page was probably the best cover page I've seen in a while from Taizai. Like it's different. Every series runs cover pages different. We know that Oda like tells side stories and stuff in One Piece and the like. But this cover page, seeing a reminiscent of one of the most hype fights in the series, was just that that was a cool callback, different angle. I really like that. Yeah. This you can tell weird. that was forever ago, because Escanor's still wearing his knight's armor. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that should be yeah. badass, though. Uh, yeah. That was a good-ass fight, actually, in the, in the manga, at least. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, all right, so the first part. Escanor in my help. What are your thoughts and feelings about this? I know, Keisha, you addressed the point about it if you want to lead the way. Mm-hmm. 
that you want to make what? <laughs> elaborate Keishin. <laughs> but it, simple as like we don't see it so like i said theory confirmation pending but like he says i will lend you my power if you won't take it so it's like that kind of indicates that he's either like cruel sunned him to like give him kind of a recharge for a bit which we do see him use cruel sun at the end so who knows but i i, I wouldn't put it past nakaba to do that kind of a gambit mm. i mean we haven't really seen like just channeling power into someone else to like oh, okay you, you say you i have like five different powers and it's like i'm giving you this one so i'm shooting you with it <laughs> but we can't necessarily deny that that's not a possibility i'm under the impression that the mobility that the commandments uh showed in the previous arcs um because they are almost the exact opposites of the graces that they the graces probably have a similar capability as well because it is yeah that's like, what I was doing yeah to derive power from from a, from a deity and they're bestowed upon it so I'm, I, I would assume that there's a different type of spell to do that but uh we well, yeah, we do kind of get confirmation that the goddess clan and the demon clan are basically two sides of the same coin yeah also Even like Grim was saying I, I that's what I figured with the with the grace transferring. <laughs> But the only problem I have with that is, is since Escanor didn't want to give it, to, well, since Mel didn't want to take it, can, how can he, you know, just transfer his power without losing the grace itself? Without, I don't, I don't see how that will, will work. But I guess we'll get confirmation uh, next chapter. I think, I think it was more of a uh, like he was saying at first. Escanor was basically saying, "Here, take your power back, like for keeps," mm -hmm. and. And Mel was like, no, I don't have the right, you know, it found you when I was not worthy of it anymore. It found you as a worthy host. So you deserve it. You know, you're the rightful owner, not me anymore sort of idea. And then Escanor was just kind of like he got kind of a little hint of his pride self a little bit. I found like he got a little bit of his daytime form into himself and he said, well, fine then, you know, if you, you know, can't accept the power, he goes, I'll just let you borrow it. How does that sound? I'm still top dog sort of feeling rather than, you know, I'm just lending you that power. You know, you don't get to keep it, you know. So I yeah. think it's more of that. Like right now, Escanor does not have sunshine, but Mail will give it back, assuming everything goes copacetic sort of idea. Yeah. I think that's the agreement, but. <laughs> um. I mean, well, however we want to take that, that that's going to be that way. But what about, um, did you guys, how did you guys feel about Escanar claiming that he's willing to just give it up for for protecting his friends and stuff? I know we already heard that previously from him before, but is this like a new extent he's willing to go to? Or like, how did you guys take this when he said that? Well, he did kind of, well, depending on which translation you read, <clears throat> like in the manga stream they have his line saying i hardly even have any lifespan left to support sunshine mm -hmm. but then in the like first translation which is what my live reaction was based on my the, too the what is it called i am girl yeah. what i don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, translation um it was like i don't have much time left so like he basically saying, I'm dying. This thing's killing me. Take it back. Do what I couldn't. <laughs> so, yeah. The one, yeah. Actually, the one that I read says, uh, Vedum, I don't have enough life left to be able to handle the burden of sunshine. But Yeah, yeah I read, that's, the yeah. Same, that's the same thing mine says, my translation. So, the issue I had with that line, though, is and it's because it wasn't necessary. At the end of the last chapter, we saw him willing, like he even thought to himself, somebody, anybody, I'll, I'll give up anything. I'll give up my life. I'll give up my power. I don't care. I just want to save the people most important to me, being the captain and Merlin. That's all I want. And then basically, if you want to call it divine intervention with the whole goddess angel thing, Mael comes riding in to save the day. So it's kind of like Escanor probably sees that as a bit of a sign. It's like, perfect. This is like... This is like just working out like two plus two is equaling four easily. But the issue is it was already solved. He didn't even need to say the line, I hardly have the lifespan to support sunshine. He could have just like 
it's not really relevant to his cause for giving Sunshine away. He could have just said, Mal, like right now, Rita's cracked. I'm beaten and broken. It's past noontime. You're at full strength. Like, take the grace. I can't do anything right now. Like, I'm at my wit's end. I did, basically, I fought as long as I could. And right now, I need to take five. I need to sit on the bench. It's time to pinch hit. Get in there. Like, we didn't need any more than that. I felt like it was, like, just trying to sell it too hard. Maybe that was just him trying to convince Mel to do it, you know, so nobody else would have to die. So even himself wouldn't have to die. But, I mean, I get what you're saying because he was already th- saying that he didn't care if he died. He just wanted to save his friend. But yeah, maybe he you. saw an opportunity to, you know, have, you know, get a win-win out of the situation. So uh-huh. He was selling it as hard as he could. Sometimes yeah. you have to be dramatic to get a result. You see it in politics uh-huh. all the time. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Liz is on healing blood. Invigorate. <laughs> Oof. I, I heard it is get well in that first translation. Yeah, yeah. I was well, we like, all is know. This yeah, we, well, yeah, she just said be well in my translation. Yeah, yeah, but we know the spell is actually called invigorate, yeah, I believe. Yeah. I, or am I just yeah. saying it wrong? But it's been used so many times. We all know what she's doing. She's doing yeah. instant heal. Yeah. I was like, that that translation's wrong. I mean, yeah, yeah. The first time we got it, we got her doing it to this degree was like in the war, in the beginning of the war. Um, mm-hmm. like this one. Um, in the Mayo fight, she did it uh, once. She healed him quickly. Um, so it, I was saying on my, my review that um, this healing ability that she has, it's very, very, very good. Eskinor got fucking mollywhopped, and like we just saw, he wasn't capable. Um, mm-hmm. But that makes me, like, weary of Meliodas. Because if she Not has that. this, it's, it means that we're going to have to use it. We're going to need it. So it, it just adds more to that, like, mystique. Like, what's what's coming? What's coming from that guy? So do you think he's going to hurt them that bad to where they'll need it? Or do you think um, he'll need it himself? No, the, the, the stigma. Stigma won't need Elizabeth. That's what I'm saying. Like, st- Elizabeth will be essential to, to stigma success against Meliodas. The, okay. the stronger she is, the more... The more chaos there has to be, like her her, her ability to, to fix things and heal things, it's too big right now. She healed two um two command uh, two uh, seven deadly sins level individuals in an instant while they were attacking Maya. So why mm-hmm. not the rest of these guys? Why can't they just, they just do catastrophic attacks, get bodied immediately after, and then get healed up and do it again? Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Plus, I remember kind of like a plot device. Exactly, exactly. So there's gonna be some way to address it, and I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It was mentioned in the beginning that um, the the healing magic that um, the goddess provide or Elizabeth provides doesn't replenish stamina or something like that. You're talking about the beginning of the war? No, no, no. In uh-huh. in in the battle for Leonis, uh, when Elizabeth did that that uh, that big light thing or whatever, she healed everybody. But I believe Meliodas mentioned that it didn't return either. A factor of magic or of stamina. One, one of the two. Uh, so that could be why Eskinor is mentioning that he can't. Um, he doesn't have enough life or whatever we want to refer to it as to to wield sunshine. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. No, nope, I just looked it up. It says it recovers. Uh, or wait, which? Whose stamina were you referring to? The person it's being used on, or the user? The person is being used. It says it recovers health and stamina. Mm. Okay, because so. uh, in, in Meliodas mentioned that it doesn't do something. There's something that it's lacking, for sure. I just don't know mm. exactly what it is. You really it says it has the is. opposite effect on demons. Mm. But other than that, I'm not... But Grimm's, Grimm's pointing out something interesting, though, because I, too, agree. Like, it doesn't actually make sense, even if you want to take the evidence in... Uh, I forget how many chapters ago, but the coughing of the blood and stuff. Escanor had very little information. He did not even know that his power for 40 years was a grace in the first place. So why would he believe after 40 years that all of a sudden Sunshine is... He doesn't have the lifespan all of a sudden at the critical moment not to use it after having it for 35 years. Like it just... It's yeah, that... too. It, it's very weird. So I, I'm, I'm with Grimm that, that, that there's probably something there that he's referring to. That it it doesn't mean... that he 
that he's felt this for a long time because there's no reason for him to just all of a sudden know this information. Like, if, yeah. if if it's sapping away at his life every time he uses the grace or every time the day comes, then he would know about that. But he's yeah. never said anything about it prior to this, not one time. So, exactly. And until until Rudesiel told him that it was not, he could not believe he was human because. Oh fuck. You know, it doesn't it doesn't even make any sense. So yeah. why would Escanor even think that that power was taking away from him? And we've all assumed now. once again, this is an assumption. This has all been a theory, but it's popular, is that he needs to go into nighttime form to recover from using the power of a grace. That's the point of the nighttime form is basically 12 hours of recovery so his body can handle sunshine for 12 hours. Okay. That's just the way we've always that's a popular theory, but never confirmed. I can't and say I've I heard find, that one, but it, it makes sense. I, I find it, I just find it really weird. Like, I, I just don't believe that Escanor was referring to that. I'm, I'm See, kind of referring to I wasn't thinking bigger. of it like that, because you're talking about that fucking... Whenever we ended with the fight with Meliodas, and they told us about that shit about him having an effect mm -hmm. uh, because of that, we were speculating mm -hmm. whether there was going to be a permanent effect of the use of the sunshine, or was it because he got his ass beat? So it, it sounds like you're referring to that this may... This, this panel is referring to the usage of sunshine. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm saying, like like the one didn't seem to be nearly as big. Like Escanor has not had enough days to recover and store. Like as okay, as okay, Merlin put, you know I, what I mean? A hundred percent. We we've heard that, and you just explained it. That's that's uh, uh, possibility one. What I was saying is possibility two is that, and I'll and I'll look it up again because uh, I know Keisha didn't find it, but I know for a fact that Meliona said. That when Elizabeth healed the Holy Knights and himself during the the attack on Leonis against Hendrickson, that she mm -hmm. healed their bodies, but she didn't. There was something else that she wasn't able to recover. Something I'm not sure what element it was, whether it was their magic, their stamina, or something. But she failed to do something, and I'm positive that it has to do with. That's what I think it has to do with this. So that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna call option B. That instead of life, the word life is referring to like stamina or the like something like that. That's what I think it is. Not that it's the effect of the grace over time that we were speculating on. It could be that, and we're going to call that option A, but fuck option A, dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Okay. Damn, bro. Hmm. Yeah, no it, it, it's hard to say. I, as I said, I, I just I found the line like at a place and odd for it to be thrown in there, but... Maybe Torian's right. He was just grasping at straws just to convince Mail. Like, seriously, dude, you can't fight these things right now without something backing you up. I understand you're an archangel, but dude, I think he's, just, great. he's just desperate. The situation yeah. right now is a lot more desperate than it seems. He understands. Mail understands. So, yeah. it's, considering Escanor just came from exactly where the fight's happening, he's probably just desperate to for someone to help. And he's and fighting he's, on reserves. Yeah, like, and, and Mel's not really being done, being yeah. exactly, you know, hasty about trying he's... to... Yeah, I mean, meanwhile, that's... Right? The, the fact I mean, that he technically is king right now, and he's doing what he can, so... Yeah, but once they get there, that's the thing. If Mel doesn't want to take the grace, then he won't be able to stand up to these people nearly as well as he would be if he took it. And he's not trying to take it back, so King or uh, Escanor is trying to force him by any means possible. Agreed. We will definitely call that option C. Because he... He even cried and shit, and like that's mm -hmm. uncharacteristic. But it's not, it's not that it's not, uh, not genuine. I, I believe that those are actual genuine tears that he actually has that feeling and desire. And that's why Mario, yeah, that's why Mario was able to have a quick flash of Rudisil because that's how he feels for his brother Rudisil. So I think I, I think it was everyone's reaction. Like even Mail was shocked to to um, see, and a lot of people were shocked. I think Hawk mentions like, wow, even like nighttime Escanor can say prideful things once in a while, like. Escanor's doing anything he can yeah, to it, convince Mel to take it. He's like, I'll even tap into who I'm not. Like, I'll be my daytime form and make you feel like you're beneath me, sort of. Idea. Like, he just for that one line, that one moment, he kind of tapped into daytime Escanor. That, like, you were saying, I think, Grim, at the beginning, like, character, some character, like, development almost for Escanor in a way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'll let you borrow it instead. This nigga, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you <laughs> borrow it. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. All right. Um, what's the next part? Uh, Zeldris <laughs> versus King Single Chastity Folk. Um, uh, from what I understand, the larger, di or the larger distance that King is away um, 
from wherever he's using his chassis for. Uh, it limits the uh, the number of chassis points you can utilize, and it increases the rate at which magic is utilized. Is that correct from what we got? Yeah, that's what it seemed. Yeah, yeah he can only use uh, because we saw it when he's in close proximity, he can use multiple forms at the same time. Yeah. He can quick switch, but he can only use one at a time when he's this far when away. When he's far mm-hmm. away, yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's. I'm assuming that after he passes a certain threshold, we should see more manifestations of chastity folds. Like, he'll get a, cer- a certain distance, he'll be able to use two, another distance, he'll be able to use three. That's what I'm expecting to be the next change. Um, mm-hmm. Well, next chapter, we saw that they're basically all together. Like, it's Whoa! All just Whoa, what you mean? What you mean next chapter, though? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You seen like a spoiler or a preview type thing? No, because because no, no, no. Mel is already at the scene of the fight, so that means that the other ones are right there. With if King is faster already than the rest of them, he should already be there. As a yeah. matter of fact, uh, so. page no, it's uh, actually oh, okay. I'm confirming the end of the chapter, Grim, the second last yeah, page. Yeah, I see, we see, see yeah. everybody standing there, like staring each other down. So that's what I mean. Next chapter, he yeah. should be able to do it, right? Right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he can yeah. do it right now, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. already That's what I'm saying. No spoilers, man. No spoilers. I don't read spoilers. Fuck that. Damn, bro. How would they like read the spoiler? Out yeah. Uh, <laughs> dang. Not the book came out yesterday. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I don't mean to go to this point. I, I've already, like, stated and hugged it, but does this single usage um, facing off against Zeldris confirm uh, King being above 200k like it showed before? Or do you guys still have speculation and doubts? Um, if he's fighting from, he was already fighting from afar without, like, you know, we, he didn't have a full control over chassis full as he had when he fought Mel. So it, it's reasonable to think that he would be able to overpower Zell just now that he's there and has, is, you know, multiple. Um, and it's not draining as much magic now that he's here as, as well. But I don't think it'll be an easy fight if that's what you're like. Oh, of course not. If that's what you mean. No, no, because like we said, we said before, uh, like we saw before. <laughs> Uh, your magic level doesn't mean your strength. It's how you're using your different techniques. Uh, yeah. That's why different characters can be very powerful and have variations. But um, I think it was in the Discord we were having an argument like two, three weeks ago about uh, Zelda's strength compared to compared to King in the fight. So it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's good to see um, that develop. Because honestly, like I already mentioned, bro, I, I was super disappointed by the, the one versus Zelda's. So to see more yeah. interaction with Zelda's is, is definitely, he's that nigga. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see them fight. I don't see a reason why it would, um, why it oh. wouldn't happen at the at the point where right now. But it's actually, a much better. It's actually a, a great matchup because it could go either way. Because you have the ruler on one side and King, regardless if he's five hundred thousand power level, it doesn't matter. It's full magic. It's all mm-hmm. magic. But he's got the ruler, so this should be really interesting to see who's going to get the upper hand and how they're going to do it I, i'm really curious to find out you know because it's like a perfect like counters to each other almost yeah we know we know increase uh chastity full guardian have shown the ability to physically affect him uh hence why he's blocking hence guardian hit him and um mm-hmm. increases uses the same exact principles though so i would and he blocked yeah. he actually had to block it before um Pollen Garden should be effective in defense. That actually, I, I went to uh, look back at that. It actually did tank. Well, I'm not sure if he just sped upward and the explosion from the light ball of love just didn't hit him and the and, uh, um, Pollen Garden. But the Pollen Garden wasn't shaken by uh, by the light ball of love. So it has shown some tough durability, if that's going to be the case. Um, yeah, man, that, that's, a, that's a good, pretty good matchup. Because King, King shit is all magic. Physical, his physical uh, measurement was trash. His will was yep. all right, but yeah, it was yeah. So let's see how that. Turns I'm, I'm imagining since the Elvis hairstyle change that his magic is the thing that's increased. I don't think like all of a sudden he got Escanor levels of strength out of this. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm thinking, you know, and as I said, I love Escanor. He's one of my favorite characters, but I think that the King Zeldris matchup is just a better matchup for a better fight. Than Eskinor Zell. Nah, nah, bro. He got he got taller, bro. He got a little bit stronger too. Relax. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. He, he, he got a little, little bit, but I mean, fa- they're fairies, right? Their strength isn't. That's not he, their ass. He basically just hit puberty, so yeah. he, he <laughs> definitely got got a little bit stronger. Me and he got some. Me. He got some uh, early gains. Early gains. Mm-hmm. Wonder if we'll see the armor again. The 
Yadra Claw. Oh, I want to see the new form with the hood and everything. Because, I mean, it would be a physical attack as well. So it could be. Oh, yeah. That's another physical way to fight. Yup. And it increases speed, too. Yeah, when he gets the two sword things and the friggin'. Yeah. Yup. Yeah, I'd be good. It could be, yup. And we technically have the ability to do the um, the Trinity attack right now with all three members here. So if, if yeah. it was needed, you could you could assault Zeldris if that would be the case. I think we'll get uh, another combo attack for sure before this uh, this war is over. Oh, it has to be. We have to. Yeah, it's I definitely think... something we'd need more of. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, yeah. this this seems like the makings of the final fight, right? With Meliodas return. I mean, yeah, once he returns, I think we will have it. Uh, we got all the sins, uh, except for Meliodas, yeah, who yeah. should be coming back soon. We got mm. the remaining, you know, top tier forces of the demons. So, I'll yeah. See how it turns out, bro. We still and haven't the seen the deity. We still haven't seen the deity. Yeah, yeah that's true. Fuck I'm ass. still wondering if it's just going to be that one little side panel at the end and be like, damn, I never really had an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot me. <laughs> What do y'all no, think they would do if they came? Like, what do you think uh, the Supreme Deity would do if, if she just dropped dropped in? Body, everybody. <laughs> you actually don't know what allegiance would be the principal one. You would think it would she assist stigma, but I yeah, you would think. I mean, that that's her forces, her archangels. I feel like I, I swear these two are just literally like the Demon King and the Supreme Deity. They're just there, like shaking hands, like we're gonna blow up all three realms. Just that's what it sounds like, bro. Like, I, <laughs> no. you can't tell me that she's not scheming on some devious ass shit, bro. Like that's they're working together, man. Don't don't like that's the they, only thing we I can know. Say they here. don't have any qualms working together. Like it's not like they at least those two they don't exactly hate each other. So, I mean, oh exactly. Well, they they hated each other. They they seemed to work together long enough to, to teach uh, Meliodas and Elizabeth a hard lesson three thousand years ago. Well, she let him hit right after that. That's why. Hey, take care of my daughter, and I'm gonna let you hit. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. All right. So let's uh let's put oh well, before we move on, um, the next one we're gonna talk about is the uh, the clock and the time. But in that same panel and picture, the Merlin titties was present. We just gotta point that out. Uh, the, the, I, I don't see them enough, man. I, I, they're, they're like they cut off. They, he cut yeah. me off. Knock about cut me off, and I'm displeased. That's why it doesn't get a ten out of ten. Damn, hey, you cut off them Merlin titties. Damn, bro, you like just... that's some considerable information. Yeah, <laughs> Knock about's mad at me. He mad at me, man. Damn. He's mad at everyone if he's denying the Merlin. Exactly. <laughs> he could have. He could have cut off the top of her head at least and given us. Some... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't need to see her face. I need to see them titties. <laughs> but ten minutes is a long time. Granted, all the sins are here now, so you know. I w Actually, can I just ask Grim because we're not going to get into another Mer Merlin thing here. I got no backup for that. I got no. I got no Naya. I got no. I like. I ain't got nobody here to to back me up. But. Uh, I just want to ask, like, another ten minutes for this one spell. Like, I, I, I don't know why. Like, she, because at first I thought she has to keep up the spell because she's constantly trying to slow down the cocoon. The cocoon's kind of like it's like holding a gear of a motor. She mm -hmm. has to keep the pressure on. If she lets go, the gear's going to start moving again. But the fact that she said she needs ten minutes. To complete the spell to like mm -hmm. stop time or slow the time down. Yes. That to me, it's her freeze a moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's I, gonna I, hold I, that yeah. finger up. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why this is the woman who stopped her own time, who did all these other crazy like stacking spell on top of spell. You you tell me she can't stack a spell on top of a spell on top of a spell no, plus sacred it's, treasure too. It's the same thing uh, with the um with the commandment when Gother was removing it. Or, or when Maya was removing it. Maya was a competent user. He understood the spell, and he did it before, but it still took him time and an enchant to do it. So I'm assuming that this major spell, that it seems to be that, like, it's doing something, and it's a, it's a much larger spell than we've ever seen her cast. It, it might take some work to do. And ten Yeah, minutes, even, right? even the demons were, were um, surprised that she could even do this level of magic, knowing what she could do already. They were still surprised that she could do, do, uh, do this spell. So I think it's just the scale of which she's doing it on. I, she's already stopped time before, like you said, her own time. But I think it's the the massive amount of magic that she's using and the scale of the spell that's causing it to take so long. 
And also, there's obviously the the plot thing, obviously, but I, that's yeah. that's yeah. besides the point. Definitely. No, fair enough. As I said, I didn't want to get into Merlin thing. I don't really like like the way she's been handled in this arc, especially. But I just was curious about the ten minutes thing because I think it would have been better if they had like my uh, analogy with the gear and the pressure. Yeah. I think that would have been better than this whole ten minutes thing because that just seems like we need to stall for chapter three hundred. You know, it's like another stalling technique <laughs> without. Without any real basis, because we've never seen Merlin happen to do a a two minute spell, let alone she's doing high level spells for kicks. It's and still going to be the same you know, outcome regardless. Yeah. It, the the time spell is still going to get broken, and Meliodas will get out. So uh, it's it, yeah, I see what you mean. It's not really a point to make it a time spell. Yeah, fair enough. I was just curious. Um, and we we'll move on to the next part: uh, the greatness of Wooded Seal. I was waiting. No, we can skip that. That wasn't the first one. <laughs> the way he is using these fairly high level techniques, he's going to be burning through his like spirit body time in no time flat. There is yeah. no 10 minutes for him. <laughs> yeah, like lightning spree was kind of huge. I didn't even yeah. like, think about it like that. Because he, he did mention last chapter that he doesn't know how long he could last. So you think it's based on how much magic he's using? Well, he yeah, is like, magic at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that. Like I think, Keishan's right, Grim. The, like he he did say like he's his body's not gonna last outside of a vessel, but he didn't take over Hendrickson, so he's only gonna last so long with that body using this high level amount of magic to hold back this sinner demon. And clearly, from what we see later, he's gonna have to up the ante even further. So he's not. Yeah, because of crisis. I mean, the the only the only instance that I say would support that is the whole thing with Elaine. How um she was exhausted and she changed her form back into her uh, smaller form. I think that would support that. But besides that, I don't think we got any instance of um. Ariel and Tarmiel, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Remember that the, the, their vessels couldn't take it, so they had to go into yeah, their but, corporal forms. But they even said that that their corporal forms, their bodies weren't ready. They wouldn't last long. Yeah, but I'm, me I'm, I'm talking about ready. for the magic use. He mentioned that it's because of their usage of magic, and I don't. Oh, oh! Good. You're you're saying so? You agree that the corporal that his form won't last long, but it has nothing to do with the output he exudes. What do you mean agree? They or, told us that. They told us that all their that, that his body isn't complete. And neither was Sario and Termios. So they yeah. yeah. So them staying in that form is deteriorating and it's gonna kill them. But mm -hmm. Keishin mentioned that it's possibility that that timing or their ability to stay in that form may be based on the magic that they have. And that makes sense because that's their potential energy pool. But I'm not sure if we've seen an example of that besides Elaine. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, agreed. I agree with Keishan's theory, but you're right. We don't have really any other than Elaine, as you said. No, I see what you're saying now. Yep. It's, agreed. Uh, I'll admit if I'm wrong. It just, it, in this crucial moment, it seems like that's likely to happen. Of course. That's, I'm wrong. This shit is like... Especially now that he's putting in work. This is like two or three big-ass spells that he did. The blocking mm -hmm. shit, the lightning spree, and the uh, yep. sparking drive. So it's like, he's kind of stacking his inventory for, for something. You know, showing showing the last word he can do and shit like that. It's impressive, no doubt, but it's it's definitely giving me that undertone of, like, the death flags. Yeah, because he's, he's, all of a sudden he's showing... Like, I, I heard y'all talking about it a lot before I even caught up about how it wasn't showing really much impressive like impressive things considering he's the leader of the archangel but now he's showing things back to back to back you know and against the center as well so agreed also, he's been he's... more impressive right now like than he really has been in this whole arc he's been really impressive also in the panel where he says i'll show you the power of the leader of the Angels, he looks like he's doing that salt sprinkling yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I just realized it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, the like. <laughs> yeah. Here's, for all the, here's for all the people who doubted. Here's for all the people who doubted. Yeah, I'll purify you. Is there, a, <laughs> is there yeah. a reason he keeps his eyes closed when he fights? I haven't a fucking clue. He's, he's like Brock from Pokemon, man. It's uh -huh. just a character that's drawn with his eyes closed. Gini Nini from Mario, nah. Bleach. Nope. You know. Nope. Because we've seen him plenty of times uh, in battle as well with his eyes open. That is indeed a, a cocky thing or whatever. We see other characters do that. Um, I, so he thinks he's so superior kept his eyes that open? he. You think he's you think he thinks he's just so superior that he can close his eyes in a fight? Well, bro, I, like I said, we can go to the previous chapters in the past five chapters and we see him fighting with his eyes open. 
Like this, that moment is nothing but a declaration. Like that's him being cocky. He, even the statement, the statement that he's saying right next to it is cocky. How is that not bad? Oh. I've seen Margaret's eyes open. I've never seen Rudestiel in his true form yeah, eyes open. I'm gonna look. I, I, like, I'm even looking at, like, all through Google, Graham, and I'm looking at tons of manga panels, but yeah, I don't two, see a single. 216, I think it is. 215, 214. That's when, 217. That's when the, the Holy War flashback is. And you see him doing it all the time. The um, um the beam attack that he did um at uh, Daddy Eddie and Must Be A. Uh, with the big ass arc thing, he had his eyes open. Whenever uh, Mars B A in his uh, in her injure form speed boots them, and then he used flash to get behind her and then blast her in the face. He had his eyes open. Um, yeah, this this is just a copy thing. Is it like two sixteen? I believe yeah. that's uh, around when the flashback starts. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Anyways, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, I just do, don't yeah. ever recall his eyes open. I really don't. I mean, if you're right, sure, great. It does. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. Um, but yeah, but lightning spree was drawn pretty badass too, man. That was cool, especially with like the goddess symbol sort of thing, like yeah, all like sticking out all over. The, yeah, that looked really that, dope. That looked really cool. I gotta admit, Rudesio, like he stepped up. He heard. He heard that we were talking trash. He heard <laughs> us that we were talking trash I about heard you from his, the heavens. Last yeah, time he was like, "Oh, my way. Yeah, <laughs> he's 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 earned he's earned his two hundred and one. He was not showcasing his two hundred and one. Now, uh, now I think uh, we've seen evidence that he's two hundred and one k. If the Senate didn't have the if he didn't have the magical ability he does have, might stand a much better chance. Maybe. Oh, no, no, no. no. Yeah, we're we're going to get into that because I, I'm pretty sure that's a translation issue because that there's two att attrib attri how do you say that? attributions or there's two things to attribute to that. And one of them has to be the Demon King's curse because mm -hmm. there's no reason why his power would be that. If you, we'll get uh, to it in a second. We'll get to it in a second. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Um. So then he got fucked up. Okay, well, oh, oh, Omega, or Hellblaze Omega? Is that a translation you guys got? Yeah, yeah. Hellblaze Omega. What is that like? Um, Omega Arc, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty reverse. much. I, I, would, I thought that, but that's just bigger. This is like, um, it looks like darkness, and I guess covered with Hellblaze would be? Yeah. Something it's like, like that. A, and it's like a condensed, but as we've seen, like it's condensed, but maybe that's because the target is only human sized. I mean, he might be able to make a super big one. Oh, for, you know? my nigga, for sure they can make big ass uh, like, like, like it, I maybe yeah. more condensed. It has more piercing power or something. It's like I'm going to kill you in one. <laughs> my, my, I don't want yeah. to blow your face off. I want to just kill you. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. have to, bro. Cause like, I, I'm. They don't have to. We obviously haven't seen it from the majority of the commandments to do things like this. But we saw Mael, whenever he had his commandments, um, the the three, uh, he made a, a ball of uh, of arc and darkness. So, like, that's that's him, like, showing base control of arc in that manner. I don't think it's unprecedented to see a demon having the same exact control of darkness, if not superior to that. that that's, yeah. 100% they could probably do Omega darkness arc or something like that. Yeah. Um... All right, so then let's actually get to the explanation of what uh, they said his power was. Um, he started to increase in attacks the more that they fought. And then um, he identified his power as Crisis. I believe there was... Or Climax. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. Crisis. Crisis sounds so much more cool. I don't care it what translation is, right? Yeah, We're going with Crisis. <laughs> We're going also, with it's literally a Pokemon ability for the starters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it actually does, like, it, it does something similar. Like, Crisis sounds correct. Like, so the way the way yeah. that the, the, my translation says, the more my life is shaved away, the more power grows in proportion. Yeah. So does that mean that the more damage he takes, like say he gets hit with an attack and it, it takes off half his arm or something like that, does that mean his power grows more than if say he just gets a couple scratches? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. In proportion. Okay. Like, yeah. Exactly. Final right. Fantasy: The lower your health goes, the more better chance you got to do a limit break. Okay. Simple as that, you know. Yeah. At at one health out of nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, you're limit breaking for days, yeah. you know. Like so, you take ten damage and you'll get ten stronger. Yeah. Like, but the thing is, and this is both part where we should discuss uh, the difference. Um, the lore that he mentioned was, uh, and I'll read it verbatim here. And as punishment for going against my crime and returning to my original form, this flesh and bone is welcoming its imminent destruction. Um, I love that. Yeah. So basically, 
because he, I guess, uh, whenever he was split into two souls by the Demon King, uh, I guess an additional spell or part of the spell or curse that he was given was that if he returns to his original form, that he will die inevitably. And yeah. I guess an appropriate time period. So, that's why I'm saying we have to separate those two things. Those are two different things that are occurring. Crisis isn't making him die. It's just amplifying his power whenever he takes damage. I think it, it goes hand in hand in the sense that since his body is deteriorating anyways, his power will grow more and more until yes, he dies. Ex so it exactly. Goes hand hand. Like an automatic effect. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. even if he wasn't getting hurt, he would still be getting stronger over time. Because even if nobody curse. was. Yeah. Exactly. yeah exactly. It's like he's taking poison damage constantly. It's like he yeah. equipped, like he poisoned himself at the beginning of the fight almost. By, yep, by going exactly. into the Exactly. By, by going into the center form. Yep. Exactly. And I love that because I think, Grim, you and I were talking about it, and I think a, f a few times on a few podcasts, I was like, where is the, and I think it was with Fang, where's the consequence for him? Like, just bam, they can fuse again with no, oh, well, yeah, we fused back I together. We could have done this. Well, we got you know? the consequence now. And, and now <laughs> we finally, I was so happy to hear this. I'm like, this is good. This is plot relevant stuff. Like, it's a question. I needed an answer, and it's a good answer. It's like, yeah, we can fuse back anytime we want, but. The moment we we'll do die. it activates the curse, right? Yeah, the demon like, king really covered it? who the, the center. Yeah, he, he, appear, he appears to be a little bit, but once again, that that's it's hard to tell be, with the perspective. Yeah, because I because mean, when we he only picked Eskinar, he was pretty massive. So yeah, yeah, that that one, I was like, was he that big? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, he's quite large. Yeah, so if you look up, it does. It's not exactly because, as you guys said, the depictions are drawn differently in different scales, but it does yeah. seem like he didn't grow that much yet. Okay. Yeah, but the Demon King covered all his bases, that's for sure. He, he, yeah. He made sure this wouldn't happen again with the center. <laughs> yeah. no, but the one thing, no I, I think it, this this ability is also showcasing us. I mean, for all we know, we could make theories and, and speculation about how powerful the center used to be versus how powerful he is right now. I could was just thinking difference. about it. But... But for me, this at least proves because a lot of people, just like with the consequence thing, a lot of people have been saying that Chandler and Cusack were far more impressive. Fusing actually made their battle worse. They have not mm -hmm. been very impressive. See, I um, think, it, like you're saying, I think it might be because it seemed back back when he first became the center, way back before the curse was placed on him, he had to be a bigger threat because this center doesn't seem like he would be able to threaten the Demon King's, you know, yeah, reign. It doesn't seem like that saying. at all to me. He had ten commandments. What, back then? Yeah. That's why he was a threat. I, I, no, no, no. He he half. That out. I thought he only yeah. had, yeah, I thought he only had half as well. That's, that's, yeah. no, no, no. Ten commandments is half of the Demon King's power. No, no, no. See, see, I, I never, I never bought into that part because, it, and at nowhere did it say when he split the Ten Commandments, he created that. He just said that long before he took over the Demon Realm. And then it's been stated that when he took over the Demon Realm, he split half of his power and, and gifted it to people. The the idea that the sinner was created before he did the Ten Commandments thing, I always took it that way. Anyways, as I said, it's just for me, the sinner was created to help him dominate the demon realm against who we don't know. That's still speculation. And then after that, he tried to commit, you know, whatever he did, he revenge, rebellion, whatever. But and we know for a fact, they told us for a fact that the sinner had Ten Commandments and they were removed from him, and that's why. And he did it say that? In, when did it say that? Uh, we'll find the panel and then uh, I'll bring it down to you later. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Not for a problem. Fact, yeah, that, that's part of his backstory. Yeah. He had Ten Commandments. And then he, some type of betrayal happened and he was punished and cursed for it. And then, yeah, because when, when you were saying that in the last podcast or something, I read every chapter leading up to, to the sinner since the start of the fight and I saw nothing on any of my translations that said that he had commandments. But once again, if you can show me a panel, man, I'm, I'm good with it. Facts. It doesn't need to be right now. Of course. <laughs> of course, bro. All right. I did. So, I do miss Chandler and Kusak. Then I like. I, like I do them. too. I, I like the center, like but I miss them. <laughs> yeah, but oh well. We got a combo platter now. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I also don't like. I don't think that he's gotten weaker. It's just a different like display of techniques. Like, obviously, um, they had a different aesthetic too, and it was very, very different aesthetic. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily make sense for him to get weaker. We do have a context for it though. Um. The curses that the Demon King's put onto him, so that could definitely be. Uh, yeah, I think that's what Griever was saying. I think that's what he was saying is yeah. that the curse is what made him, yeah. you know, not as, as powerful as he used to be. Yeah. yeah. A wild yeah, Zarso yeah. has appeared. So, there he is. 
What's going on? What's um, the next uh, part is the arrival of the angel. And I, I got, I got, I got to read the quote. I got, I got, I got to read it, bro. Oh, false veil, vanish before my grace. And Just the, like me, I arrived. <laughs> the clouds <laughs> parted, bro. Like yeah, that, that was clean, bro. <laughs> Like you see Rudy still looking up and she's like, oh, he's oh. brother and shit. Like, <laughs> oof, oof. I hope there's an immaculate chorus in the anime. <laughs> That'd be I like nice. how Rudy still had his eyes closed when he looks up. Crazy. I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, he's been around Grace so long, to. like, you know, squint is all you can do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it shows that he's blinded by his own flash. Maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. That's definitely your life from above, bro. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's exciting to see that. I know we were speculating before whether if Mayo's return would be able to dispel um, the darkness spell, and it seems to have uh, been able to do that. So now yeah. I guess he has free usage of that. Um, this wide, well, no, it's not a widespread, but like this spread at the at the end is fucking badass. With with yeah. the sins, Zeldris, the OG Nimegas is sitting there on the ground, and then you see just the angel of death. All the way it looks like a lamp from behind. Yeah. Lie to you. <laughs> I was about to say he looks like a damn candle or something. Yeah, yeah bro. I saw that from behind. I'm like, bro, that's bro. Come on, come on. Like, you can't be doing that in the holy war, bro. Come on, seriously. You came. It, it's with... Lumaire's cousin. Clearly, he <laughs> left. A... Clearly, they left Escanor somewhere because I don't see Escanor on Deanne's shoulder, carried by King on Hawk. I don't see Escanor anyway. <laughs> He might. It's a super he... small. They're super distance away, bro. Yeah, yeah, I know, but they're they're making the point to show Goth are on top of Hawk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, in, if in anything, if anything, they probably have Escanor somewhere else. If anything, probably like with Diane, because Diane probably is the best when it comes to like you know keeping small niggas uh, like at Maybe. bay and protected. Yeah. In their titties, fair enough. I mean, yeah, there you go. See, like, see right there. Oh like, no, 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 hell no, not with King around here. You got me fucked. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> this further like, feeds into my theory that Escanor is channeling his power into Mal at this point. So he might actually be where they first caught him. And he's just safe, and he's just focusing on that one task. Possibly. Possibly. Maybe. I mean, again. It's like, because if I die, then nobody's getting this thing, so it's like... Yep. Crazy. And it's also badass to see um, the first instance of him. Uh, he pulls out Cruel Sun. And it looks very... It doesn't look uh, drastically different from SNS Cruel Sun, but it is a lot more condensed and smaller. So I'm interested to see what type of DC and effect it has coming from the, the true... The true user of grace. Well, the second user of grace, but yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm actually looking at that, and I tried and tried. I don't know if you guys see it. I'm thinking that that design in the middle of the sun is supposed to be a, like, like in the similar style of the tattoos of the sins. Like, it's supposed to be, like, an abstract image of a snake or a dragon or a lion or something. I can't see it yet, though. Like, I feel like I'm missing something. Like, it's Oh, the stuff on the to... sun? Yeah. yeah, like I felt I think like that's it's... just. I think that's just no, because no, because okay. So the thing is, that was already there when Escanor uh, first, uh, first in, like well, uh, first used Cruel Sun. It's mm-hmm. it's just uh, it's like when I can't remember uh, what they call it. Burned? Yeah, no, it's like one of those things that that's on the sun. It's not a corona. It's like a it's, it's like weird. a weird spot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, yeah. It's like one of those sun weird spots. Spot? I wouldn't call it, yeah. It just looked like really intricate, like just the way it swivels, like yeah. it's not spotty in like three places or anything, like it's all in yeah. one. So it just looked like it was like meant to showcase something, like a little hint, hint, nudge, yeah, no, nudge. No, no. But, like, that's, that's indeed on purpose, but yeah, I think I yeah. think you No, know, Griever, I think you're right because when when, when Escar first did it, he thought uh, there was one, and then and then like uh, it, this this does look different when uh, when Mel's doing it, and I think that might be because all like hey, like someone else is using the sun, so it might look slightly different. Right, yeah, I think yeah. it's gonna Even be a lot that. more like powerful now, or do you think it's gonna be a similar DC? Um, I'd say more powerful. I feel like in in Shonen period, it, when when stuff is condensed, like when an attack we've seen before at a large scale is condensed, it gets stronger every time. Like yeah, it, and so I feel mm-hmm. like it's gonna do a lot more destructive damage now that he's condensed it into a much smaller vessel, like all that power into a much smaller vessel. I mean, well, Dude, I don't I, think it's condensed. I, I, I think it's just like it's running on a better <laughs> system for the most part. Because like it's like yeah. that he can control but, it more. Coincidentally, well, yeah, it is, it is yeah. Mayo who's gonna be the one fire. Well, the first attack that Mayo does. 
is coincidentally this attack. So it'll be hard to yeah. differentiate between like if it was just because he's stronger or if it's like you know what I'm saying? Like there's gonna yeah. be more factors now. How much uh, just out of curiosity, um how much like you guys are talking about like we condense attacks and stuff. How much more did you want Escanor to condense than a finger man? Like he, he can't condense any further than that. That's the smallest thing he can do, man. Which then ma- imagine how big this thing's going to be when it probably expands upon impact. Yeah. Oh damn. <laughs> oh damn. I mean, we I thought King was impressive. The more I think about oh, yeah. chapters, that shit does remind me of the light bomb on Glove a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Because like it, it had like little like curve marks on it on this on like coming off of it, but like. That that whole thing was based on the unification of, or at least we think, the unification of commandments and the power of arc. That's why we think it took that form. But it could be just that he took that form just because he had four commandments. So uh, let's let's see how. I don't think he's got it anymore, man. I don't think he's got the power of darkness or anything anymore. If that's where you're going with that. Oh no 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 no! I'm saying that like um. How do I put this? The aesthetic of, of Maya when he had four commandments, it was different than when he had three. Yes. So I'm saying that it may not be the number of commandments that you have that changes your form. It may be the mixture of arc and darkness. But as we saw, he was already using arc and darkness with just three commandments. So I'm not sure True. if it's that he changed form because he got the fourth or because that was a big unification of the two powers. It, I'm not sure how which affected it more. I'm not sure if it looks that way because he has arc with commandments. I, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it could be a lot of different yeah. things. So yeah. That, so that's You're talking about this one, right, Graham? I just posted it in the yes. Discord. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's one of them. That's one of them. Yeah. He's using Combining. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we all know it, but yeah, that that's, yeah. But the light bulb so of love is different. Checking. Yes, it is. It's no longer a, yeah. Because I so. keep a lot of pictures like that. Oh, yeah. I keep all my stuff from all, any images I use in videos or thumbnails. I keep them all. Um, yeah, man, this guy should be a monster. Oh, shit, the watermelon, yeah. Yeah, the destruction. <laughs> the, <world>. the watermelon. <laughs> the watermelon, <laughs> light and darkness. Um, okay, so any predictions uh, for next chapter? Any thoughts on that? Um, before before we get into that, can I just say one thing? I, I did a big rant at the end of my video, but I, I'd be remiss not to mention it here, is that I think you and I, Grim, were uh, messaging back and forth in the Discord on Thursday or Friday about this happening and we all kind of knew mail was going to get sunshine back i'm not too pleased with it but okay whatever um the problem i have is with the fact that the uh, black knight spell which was literally meant chandler seemed to have some indication that sunshine could be dispelled to save zell in the sense of casting it you know and then all of a sudden mail shows up uh, all by probably stronger 100 110 percent whatever you want to call it but he uses sunshine to dispel the spell that dispelled sunshine. It to me that's a little eh for me. Um, uh, it, it could be that he but... wasn't under the cover of the darkness when he dispelled it. That's the only thing I could come up with is that that's why he was so far away. He probably like he flew like Escanor cannot, but he yeah. like Mile flew way outside of the darkness when he could get the power of sunshine back and cast against it. That's why it was a big beam of light coming through the darkness. Yeah, he that's what I was saying. It was. Yeah, I if that's it was... the case, I'm okay with it. But I was not okay with Mal all of a sudden being able to, like, oh, Sunshine, Escanor can't use it in here? Well, I can. Uh, <laughs> like, I, mean, I referenced the... I was... um... Go ahead, go ahead, No, I was going to say that um, when uh, when Escanor... Yeah, when... So when, when they went through the whole conversation about, you know, trying to give uh, Mal back his grace, and then he was all like, I'd rather not take it. That was actually pretty surprising to me. Um, and then, you know, when Eskimer came through and was all like, oh, yeah, like, I'll just let you borrow it. I was like, okay, I kind of feel like this is, uh, uh, when they do this, I think this was like, uh, what, like in fairy tale? Like, uh, like Grey and Kana both got, like, uh, like magic from people who were dead. And, like, they could, like, I, basically, like, they were given that magic. And, like, we're seeing something similar happen here where it's like you're essentially borrowing power from someone else. Normally, people have to die for this to happen, but I mean, like, I mean, it, I guess something's wrong if you're if you're just sharing power. Yeah, like, like um, it's, 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 it's weird, but it's like it's I don't know. 
to to reference that what we talked about before um, in the um the manga that was released with the uh the recent Seven Deadly Sins movie, um check that out if you guys can if you want to see it. Uh, the ma- the manga is a prequel, and uh, the fight interaction uh, encounters Meliodas and uh, and Mael, and um, the instance is that Mael uses overwhelming light to deal with the uh, the present em- enemy, uh, the main character of the movie, or the, the main enemy of the movie, the demon Bill Lion. All right, I, th- I think that's his name is, and um, Mael mentions that whenever Meliodas shows up and pushes back his light. He mentions what is this overwhelming darkness that doesn't fade against my light. So, just just to refer to that, I'm not sure if it's gonna be, if that's what yeah. you're looking for exactly. But that would be an instance of um, his light being able to affect darkness in adverse ways. Fair enough, fair enough. But as I, uh, other than one translation, I was always in the impression that Black Knight or True Knight or whatever it was a spell. It might be fueled by darkness. He's using this darkness to fuel it. But it's still just a spell, similar like Merlin should be able to cast it by the sounds of it. You know what I'm saying? So I was just under the impression. But everyone has made a good point. It was pointed out to me on my review in the comments that a lot of people are saying he flew outside of the because we all kind of not agreed, but kind of said, yeah, it's probably the most likely is that when Chandler does that, he actually changes within a certain space, day to night sort of idea within a space, and Mile just probably flew out of it. And then got sunshine. Ooh, okay, now I can cast in into it and and pierce through the darkness. Uh, I mean, well, either way, in in the actual manga and in that uh, in the movie's manga uh, flashback, he's using uh, uh, sunshine to pierce through both of them. So it's the same instance. Which in which, uh, with, which Escanor did do against Esterosa. He covered up his son with darkness, but, and he was just like, no, boom. no, 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 that's not the same. Because uh, like you mentioned. This this darkness manipulate or the the space manipulation is a spell. We can confirm that's a spell. So I'm yes. simply saying that it seems that his magic or his light, sunshine of the light of sunshine is able to affect spells. It's like you know, uh, fucking arc can block against certain types of fire spells. Uh, we see must be a throw or whatever. It, I guess I guess it's it's in that vein. Like you said, a much like much more likely explanation would be the the distance thing, where he flew out of the zone of the spell. And then he broke it with his light. But either way, I hope I hope system. that's the case, Krim. I really I do. I figured I figured that no, I figured that like once he got like uh like his grace back and everything, it was like okay, uh this darkness here has been here for like a minute. Let me just go ahead and clear it because like remember it was Chandler who cast his spell like pretty like like what is it, like like what more than five chapters ago and we're like it's still been here i'm not saying that there's no there's no way he couldn't just like you know like went outside of the range of the attack in order to like you know grab the sun and uh to, like and dispel the darkness but i'm assuming that like once he got the magic and everything it's like okay i'm okay like i'm basically back to how i used to be three thousand years ago there really isn't a difference besides the fact that i'm a little bit crazier um let's do it the the, the problem i think griever had with that was that it this spell was put it up there to counter sunshine and for him to just be able to sit inside of the spell and counter the spell that's supposed to be countering him is right is yeah. what the problem is but i guess if I he can overpower you. the spell then it won't really matter but i, I don't know i i get what griever's saying though. that's why I, that's why i made the idea that he maybe left the range of of the um uh, okay. blackest night or whatever and then dispelled it so he wouldn't be under the you know under the spell when he used sunshine I feel because you, I feel because as far as uh, uh, as far as we know, Chandler has no evidence to believe. Remember, he was surprised when he figured out Escanor had sunshine, and his immediate reaction to realizing what Escanor had was to cast out of all the spells he knows. He cast that specific spell. Yeah, but we were talking about Eskinor's. that not too so, long ago, and we were saying that he's yeah. most likely sunshine before. So when he realized that that's what Escanor had, that was probably the first thought he had because someone else countered it like that a long time, three thousand years ago. Right, maybe he, he countered he, it that way, but so I'm thinking that the reason why they probably figured that that would be like the best, like uh, the best option, simply because Escanor isn't a goddess and probably wouldn't be able to handle uh, what they're about to do to him because he was kind of like in the middle of a fight. It's like okay, this guy's that's pretty an awful powerful. gamble Chandler took with Zeldris's life, man. That's an awful damn gamble to say. Yeah, see, the well, problem is, you, if we, if, if, yeah, like if we knew history? that he knew, if we knew that he knew. That the sun was the reason Escanor had uh, was able to use the grace, then it would make sense. But he didn't know that. All he knew was that it was that it was the great sunshine. So for him to cast that spell implies that 
Sunshine has been countered in that way before, not just because Escanor uses it due to the actual, you know, sun. But we've seen so. the most the most capable fighter that fought against Maya, we know the worm, is Meliodas. We don't know that Meliodas can cast um, spells as easily as a maze as other things, but we know the, te the techniques that he uses are in these spells. So he is capable of casting spells. We've also seen um, Esterosa in his whatever we want to call it state. Um, he was able to cover the sun, and he believed that it had some adverse effect on, on what was going on. So it's not like covering the sun or, or covering it with darkness isn't an unprecedented thing to affect sunshine. It's not like it's not completely out of the realm to, to come up with that solution, but I agree to get to get that information to deduce this result and have it work as effectively, that does imply that it was the proper technique to use. But Yeah, it was just so fast like he just it was like his initial reaction. His his yes. master's life was in, in, yeah. in ultimate danger. Like it was he was about to die. And that was his in, that was his first reaction was to cover the blood out of the sun. Yeah. That, was, that was the very first thing he did. So oh, I yeah. think that's what it yeah. is. Like I said, we've seen people use the effects of the base magics, arc and darkness, to affect spells before. So it's not yeah. completely unprecedented. But I do, like, like we are, this is an issue for a reason. We're talking about it for a reason. So. Yeah. Um, as I said, um, I, I'm, I'm, I know there are solutions, as uh, Torian pointed out, like he flew out of the zone, because as we've all agreed, he didn't change the entire world tonight, and he didn't block out the sun necessarily with darkness, he just changed within this space, it's 10 o'clock at night, right now, that's the, that's the easiest way to look at it, as far as we could tell, and he just walked away, <laughs> he, he just flew out of it, and went, oh, well, that, not affecting me here, bitch, you know, that, that makes a little more sense than him just all of a sudden yeah i'm gonna counter the counter i don't know but that Wait. makes less to me man. like it, it's uh like it's a space time spell but you can just get out of the area of the space and time like why that was that, that's well, what you do in a fight normally you just is like, that leave fact that space. is that fact or is that you uh, no so no that's assuming that this spell does space time no it's confirmed it's the it turns into actual night yeah, it turns it. It's called tr it's uh, dark curtain of night or true night. It it actually does yeah. When he used it change. the very first time, we could see the wide, the extremely wide yeah, range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You right, covered yeah. when he used it the very first yeah. time. But it's a it's a huge range, but it's still he's actually turning it day to night. He's not blocking the sun like with a with a like because as we've seen, Escanor doesn't need to be exposed to the sun directly. He's not Superman. He doesn't need to be exposed yeah. to the sun. He can be deep in the middle of the earth as long as it's daytime. He's still in beefy form. As a matter of fact, in in well, a I mean, panel, hold we on. Can he wasn't see... necessarily deep in Earth because remember, like uh, the anime does do like a good job, ex like at least like, explaining, like rather at least like showing what's going on. Because remember, like the sun was technically coming through uh, the cave after uh, after he woke up. Because oh, remember, true. Like, they had cut through. True. Yeah, they cut uh, like open into his bar, and then it was like, all right, dude, uh, you know, uh, put him up. Yeah, waiting, it does. Like, 12 it hours. does have to. It has. There has to be a correlation with the presence of the sun in him because. It, we we see in an earlier panel that uh, the true knight doesn't cover a while. Like they're outside of the the true knight's range when they were talking with Escanor and Mel when they were talking about uh, the grace and stuff. They were outside of the range, yeah, so he could have just cast it before he went into, inside of the range. Yeah, um, when they, when they did the exchange of abilities, they could have done yeah. that or something. We don't yeah. know. He also came from above too, and we know that uh, it was the only, the only thing that we saw covering or as the as the effect of darkness was the dark clouds. So it would make yeah. sense right. to be above them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, bro, that to me makes less sense. Like if, if that to be were to be a tactic in a fight, it would be obvious that you would just move the battle. And as a person in the battle, you moving also moves the battle. It's not like I run away to side B and you're gonna say inside A. No, you're gonna come to side B to kill me. So that's why I say it, it's weird that that would be a solution to fix it. But I don't know, man. Well, because but in this context, he Mel wasn't a part of the battle yet, so it's not like he yeah. left. To you know, go dispel the the um, true knight and then came back. He was never there, so he came in, saw true knight, and was like, "Okay, I'll take care of this," you know. And then they started, and now they're gonna start the battle next chapter. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you when uh like when he came through and like and like broke the clouds and everything. First things first, I was like, "All right, male male might actually get some credit for me this chapter because that's actually pretty cool." I'm not gonna lie to you, um, this whole uh this whole spotlight thing, pretty beast, but <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to him dispelling the thing. Again, like I'm thinking, I'm thinking that after he got his grace, basically he's like he's at full power, like he was two thousand years ago. Magic canceling is a thing. Look at his brother. This chapter, like uh, what's it called like stopping um Hellblaze Omega, only yeah. if, uh, right? Well, until like you know like another magical power appeared, but <laughs> other than that, yeah. But then that I again like I'm not adverse to say that uh 
the, like again certain characters in ties they have enough magical power to essentially cancel out other people's spells and mill getting and mill getting sh- mill getting sunshine back and canceling out a spell that that chandler remember chandler cast a spell and you can assume that if chandler were to cast a spell and uh, and his being or or himself hadn't left the area then there's a good chance that it's not going to move i wouldn't be so, like i wouldn't be adverse to say that mill has the ability to you know um take down a false veil of darkness like that but it's not that simple like I, I like that you brought that up because we've seen from Rudy Sound himself in this entire fight that they have the ability to use arc in several different manners. Whether it's um, we were mentioned that Merlin and Rudy were casting all kinds of invisible spells and when they uh in, invisible um, debuffs and spells at Zelda and, and the demons whenever they arrived and it wasn't working because of the power uh because of the power of God. Um, we know we've seen him make the um the sanctuary triangle to protection himself. Uh, we've seen him stop um. Uh, I think it was like Purgatory Balls that must be ate through in the flashback. Um, we've seen him uh, create the Omega Arc. That's a huge ball in variance. Um, we've seen him do Beams attacks. Uh, they've made lightsabers. All of them have. Um, you, you get the point. But the, the usage of Arc has been exceptionally variable to the point where we yeah. understand that like Darkness should be similar and it does have a similar usage. So I'm not adverse to going with what Zarso is saying that some forms of base magic can overwhelm other forms of magic, but we know that spells are different. Spe- spells, it's not that they're different than base magic, it's that they do different things. Like, you can have an attack spell, like the hell base that he did, or you can have an absolute cancel spell. They're both spells, but they're in technically different genres within spells. So I don't think if you do a, um, a space-time thing, that you can just overpower it with, like, force magic or a force spell. It would have to be a spell similar to that. And I don't think we've seen a spell that could cancel magic. Of arc. Of arc. I oh, think what he arc. meant was that it was overpowering. It was just overpowering the true knight. So like, Mel is is his his magical power was strong enough to just dispel it with by using whatever whatever he used to you know that incantation. I don't know exactly what what he say. Hold on. He says, uh, "Oh, false veil uh, vanished before my yeah vanished before my grace." So I guess that it just it, that kind of alludes to him just being able to cancel yes. true knight just with its you know with his base grace. Yeah, I, I would yeah. say we just gotta use a different word than cancel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Him. You know, okay. You know, I think the problem is here. You know, I think the problem is here, honestly, right? At the end of the day, uh, I think it was, yeah, I think it was last chapter. Luda Show was like, because, yeah, because um, we don't have the Supreme Deity here, the Demon King's powers are running rampant, right? Because that's always been like a big issue, uh, this fight. I think it was, uh, what, when he was in Margaret's body, he was all like, I can't believe that Zelda's power uh, goes beyond, like, uh, the domain of, like, or rather, like, his power, like, uh, reached the domain of my grace, Flash. Like, that's kind of crazy. Which, which makes sense because like if if that's because if Amazembia was his emerging magical power, how is it reaching the same level uh, of power that uh, that someone like the supreme deity would have? And this isn't even like going into his ability with God. So, um, hold on, where's I going to go with this? Yeah. So, if that yeah, so if that were the case, then I wouldn't. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if Male, who was an archangel, got this power again, would be able to stop like a spell. And just like Grimm said, spells, spells and powers are inherently different. Like some, somewhat like, for one person, magical cancel might be a power. For someone else, it'll be a spell. Some, some powers can't necessarily be spells because they're just too intrinsic. And and vice versa, others are pretty simple to the point where it's like, oh yeah, that I'll, I'll like I'll learn that now. And I'll learn his power like tomorrow, easy. Yeah. I see what you mean. Um, I will say, I will say that uh, I, I I did enjoy uh, Lightning Spree. I thought that was a pretty cool attack. Um, this chapter, Lucio came through with like some pretty cool attacks. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, I'll yeah, give, that's what we were I'll talking give the goddesses about. this chat, yo. I yo, okay, I'll give it to the goddesses this chapter. They really knew what the fuck to do. I'm not gonna lie. Like they like, they're really hitting this chapter. These goddesses were really hitting. My only thing is, why, like yo, like why is male so thick like in those clothes, bro? Like yo, do something about that. Like honestly, like 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 I'm, like, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Like I get it, you know, like you're like you're cool, you came through, but like bro, like your muscles are like too much, too much. Getting back Eskimo, like those muscles made sense. Like this right here, I don't know, I don't know. Oh shit, fuck my oh, man, I was muted for that shit. They ain't even hear me, dog. Alright, uh that was it for uh today's uh one put or <laughs> One punch. One punch. Nice. Huh? Wrong number. What the guy? All right. All right. So two nine seven. Uh, amazing chapter. 
Uh, that's gonna be it for today's board hack. We're gonna have more for you. Um, we've been doing it. I think this is like episode 30 or 30, 30 something, 38, something like that. You're into the 30s. It must be by now. Yeah, Damn. Yeah. You remember as I said from day one, nigga, we pushing that shit. I ain't doing that shit. Damn. All those theories, man. Just think about all those theories we used to like spout out. <laughs> half of them wrong 30. as fuck. <laughs> Wild. Getting crazy. Getting crazy. Yeah, more than half my theories are wrong. Hey, I got some right, though. Some are right. <laughs> But we've gotten to this point only because of you guys' support. So continue to like and comment below. Um, uh, I believe... Are we on break next week? Uh, not that I, I see. It didn't say it. Yeah, no. We're not okay. on break Come but on. No. We're, no. That we're piece, on that not chapter. Good. We in there, bro. Stay tuned for that. Um, I came into before, guys. We're going to be starting up the One Piece draft next weekend, most likely. So stay tuned for news updates, stuff like that, about that for round two. We're out of the holiday season, so we should be able to get that popping. Um, we are recording the One Punch Man podcast today. So if you're watching this, it's probably tomorrow. So in three days from that day, yeah, you already know you're going to get the One Punch Man podcast. You, you already Damn, know. you make it confusing. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, say, so today, three days from that day, that day, yeah. but not like today, tomorrow, but not tomorrow. It's three days. Bro, I can't trust you to me, so I just got to say, you know, a big ass time span. It'll happen between that time span. Just say January. Y'all gonna get it sometime this month. Y'all gonna get it sometime this month, though. You should just say, soon after you're viewing, it's probably out. <laughs> I got y'all this time, though. It's like the last time I, <coughs> I didn't do the One Punch Man announcement, but I got y'all niggas, bro. These niggas have been funny as fuck. Um, I'll probably do some shit from the One Punch chat. Uh, put it in there, but we'll see you guys next time. Uh, like, subscribe, check out everybody's videos, everybody's live reactions, everybody's reviews. Um, every nigga in the Hero Association, go to my channel page. It's on the right side. Everybody's stuff, so click there, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Yo!